Hello again, out there in Radio Land. This is Tubal Cain again after a long summer hiatus. It is now October of the year 2011. And today we're going to make another little project. This is project number two, uh, a simple project, and it's going to be a, a plum bob. Now, plum bobs uh, come in many s shapes, sizes, and uh, materials. And uh, remember the word plum. Uh, when we refer to plumb bobs or uh, carpentry means perfectly vertical, vertical, not to be confused with level. Uh, it uh, always annoys me when somebody uses a, uh, a long level and they're checking a door jam or something like that or a wall and they say, yeah, this is perfectly level. And I always want to say, it's not level, it's plumb. But sometimes you don't want to correct certain people if you know what I mean. So we got some brass ones here. Some of the earlier ones uh, from hundreds of years or even thousands of years ago were made of lead and that's the derivation of the, the word uh, plum. Sometimes I get a little sidetracked but I just got to tell you where the word plum came from. Uh, I had Latin in high school. I'm so old it was required before you went to college. You had to take Latin even if you weren't a priest. But uh, in Latin the word um, Plumbum means lead, and uh, on our periodic chart of elements, uh, the atomic symbol for lead is PB. You can see where they got that, and we have several words that have been derived from the Latin words such as plumbers and plumb bob and just plain plumb. Remember that early plumbers, maybe thousands of years ago, were working pretty much just with lead. They didn't have copper or steel pipe yet. They had lead pipe in Rome and uh, some of those ancient civilizations. So uh, since they worked with lead they were given the name uh, plumbers. Take that for what it's worth. Okay we're gonna make a plumb bob similar to this one. Uh, a simple one that you could buy at any hardware store for a few dollars and uh, we're not really desiring to have a plumb bob here. We're making a project that might have minimal interest, but yet we are uh, getting certain operations on the lathe by making that. And high school students often didn't understand uh, that, that we weren't always making a project just so that they would have something to take home and use, but we learned certain operations. And in this one particularly, we're going to do a taper turning, and we're going to drill and tap on the lathe and face and then uh, instead of making the screw like this with a knurl on it, which is always troublesome, I avoid knurling if I can, we're going to use a bolt which we will shorten and that will have a hole drilled in there for the string. And we're going to start with hexagon stock. It would be nice to have a little bit uh, larger stock like a 7 8 or 1 inch, but this is 3 quarter inch across the flats. So that's what we're going to do and we'll start by going over to the atlas lathe and we'll face one end and then we're going to drill it and this bolt is 3 8 16 so we're going to drill it uh, 5 16 and then we're also going to counter drill it only about an eighth of an inch, inch deep and that allows this bolt to go in all the way because you know there's a little bit of a taper usually on the end of, where they end the thread and it doesn't go in all the way up to the head so we will uh, get around that by counter boring uh, just a little bit. So I'll see you at the lathe momentarily. We're at my closing 12 inch lathe. Uh, a moment ago I might have said we were going to do this on the atlas but I meant the closing. And we've got the hexagon stock and the three jaw chuck and our first operation will be to face this off and notice that there's only about a half, out, uh, half of an inch sticking out of the chuck so that we have a lot of rigidity. Always keep, uh, work as close to the chuck as you possibly can and still be safe and not strike the jaws. Now I've got a uh, regular uh, Armstrong type or this is a Williams uh, tool holder in there and it's a left hand tool holder with a right hand turning tool and I'm in a traditional tool post rather than the Aloris. Now I've got that swung around so that I can check to see if I'm on center. 
and I'm pretty good so now I can rotate the whole thing around into the position that I want to face and then I will lock the tool post and then we'll face that off. Alright, the lathe is running at about 600 RPM and we're going to uh, feed into the work just a little bit and then we'll turn the calm a little bit more I need. And now we're going to feed the cross slide or cross feed out and face it off. Now if you're not truly on center and you have a little bit of a tit left there, now is the time to stop and correct that. And you can see it's not quite cleaned up so we'll take one more pass. And it looks like I'm pretty well on center. Now some people have criticized me and, and said that uh, don't face from the center out, face uh, from the outside in toward the center. And that's just the way I was originally taught, but either way works. I always thought there's a little more tendency for it to dig in if uh, when you're feeding uh, away from you, but uh, I'll feed away from me right now to show you that you can do it both ways. Bob is going to be three inches long, more or less. It's not very critical. I started with a piece of material that was just a little bit over three inches. This is just common, whole rolled 1018 steel. Now we're going to break that corner with a file. Be very careful when filing on a lathe that you're nowhere near the chuck jaws, but that gives it a finished look rather than the sharp corners. I have to set the camera down, so I'm not going to show that. For our drilling operation, I've got the Jacob three jaw chuck in the tail stock and a number four center drill mounted in the chuck with a drop of oil on it. And now we're ready to turn on the spindle and feed in, and we're going to go about uh, two thirds of, of the way up the taper on the center drill. Be very careful you don't break the center drill off into the work, or you got to pretty much scrap the work. Come in real slowly so that the center drill does not deflect. Center drilling should always be the first operation that you use uh, when you're drilling on the lathe. They are short and stubby and do not tend to bend. I like the size number four. Now the hole is truly established and when I uh, drill it my next size, the, uh, the, the drill is not going to deflect, it's going to stay in that hole. Okay, it's been center drilled and now I'm going to drill a quarter inch as my pilot hole. I probably could go right in there with a the finish size, but I like to drill a pilot hole a quarter inch. And I've got uh, the drill bit marked with black marker. And we're going to go in about an inch and a quarter deep. You can also take the reading off the quill, but since I'm uh, uh, taping this, I thought this might be a better way to, to show you. And I like to always drill a little deeper than necessary when I'm tapping a hole, so I do not uh, tap to the bottom of the hole and break the tap off. So uh, that, that's a good tip to remember. A little oil on there, and, uh, and away we go. I know that some of what I'm telling you is a repeat, but some people maybe haven't watched the other one or any of my other videos. It's a real sharp bit. If you have two equal sized chips coming off of a, of a drill, you know that it's really sharp and it's sharpened uh, evenly on both sides. And that isn't totally true with this one. I'm almost up to the black mark. When you're going real deep, you might want to stop and back it off to clear the chips. I am now going
going to drill it 5 16 diameter, which is the tap drill size for 3 8 16, or pretty close to it. I haven't marked the drill bit for depth. I'm just going to drill until I feel it hit the bottom, which is very apparent. We're not taking much off, so I'm feeding very fast. I can feel it hit the bottom.